Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's see why here. This is part of a crash course in Figma's auto layout. In this lesson, we are going to create a navigation bar. We'll be learning things like how to add a button to a nav bar, how to add a logo to the nav bar, how to add constraints to the nav bar, and finally, how to make it responsive. Are you ready? Let's get started. So, I have gone ahead to create some components we will be using for the design. Here we have the logo, avatar, and the search component, which is already an auto layout, just like the icon. We must now create the navigation list. Press T on your keyboard to select the text tool and type out a text. Change the text color to any color of your choice. Using the keyboard shortcut Shift A, apply auto layout to the text. Next, using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl Alt key or clicking the component icon from the top, change the nav list into a component. This will allow us to make rapid changes to the nav list items later on. Select the resource icon from the tools bar and create an instance of our nav list component. Duplicate the nav list instance twice. Select all and apply auto layout using Shift A. Go ahead and change the navless text to make it more meaningful. Open the resource panel again and bring the rest of the instances to the page. Select and align the search bell icon and avatar component and apply auto layout. From the auto layout alignment panel, Make sure it's set to left alignment. Apply auto layout to the nav list items and profile frames. Also make sure the alignment is set to left alignment. Now, select both the auto layout we just created and the Fentech logo and apply another auto layout. Apply a fill color. Select the wallet and certain sticks and change the color to gray. Check this out. When we resize the frame, notice that it doesn't resize. Let's fix it. Select the navbar frame and set the width to fix width. This will enable us to set a fixed width for the navbar. Now select width and enter 1440 pixels. Now that all the items are squished to the left, with the parent frame selected, go to your alignment icon in the auto layout section on the right side panel. Click on it to display the advanced layout. Where you see spacing mode currently set to packed change it to space between this will distribute all empty space not occupied by the auto layout frames object among the child objects now that the frame is resized let's go ahead and add our final touches to the design select the dashboard text and add a fill color of white and apply a corner radius of 10. Also change the text color. Select the search frame, set the fill color to white and reduce the opacity to 13%. Apply the same settings to the bell icon, setting the fill color to white and the opacity to 13%. Let's add some padding to the nav bar. Select the nav list frame and set spacing between items to 80. Also, don't forget to set the nav bar's horizontal padding to 24 and the vertical padding to 8. Finally, convert the nav bar into a component for future use. With the frame tool, select the desktop frame which is 1440 by 1024 
and head to the resource panel to create an instance for your navbar. Align the navbar on your frame. Now, let's try to resize the frame. Oops, it's not working. No problem. We can fix this using the power of constraints. Select the navbar and head to constraints in the properties panel. This is a virtual representation of the resizing property of the auto layout component. Currently, the width is set to fixed, but we want to constrain this to both the left and right of the frame. Now, as we resize the parent frame, the navigation bar responds dynamically. Finally, we have designed a responsive navigation bar using auto layout and constraints. In our next course, we will look at how to create a responsive price plan card using auto layout. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all our future content. See you in the next one. Bye.